Welcome back to the Beauty Boss Millionaire Podcast with daily on-the-go episodes packed with testimonies and business tips to help you create financial freedom through entrepreneurship. Hosted by the owner of Fracassi Lashes and the Blow Dry Lounge, the Beauty Boss Millionaire herself, Felicia Fracassi. Welcome to the Beauty Boss Millionaire Podcast with your host, Felicia Fricasi. I hope you are well today and things are going smooth. The objective of this podcast is to help business owners grow their business and how to stay creative and innovative when others try to kind of replicate or duplicate your process. Advertise, advertise, advertise. I spoke about this on the last podcast. And if I had $1 to my name, I would use that last dollar, not in anything else, but advertising. Because if people don't know about you, then how are they going to buy from you? And a lot of the times these celebrities, they use their platform because everyone knows them and they end up going into business and they make even more money. It's because everyone already knows them. They have a huge following. So it's really important that you're building up the following. No, don't buy followers. Simply advertise. Get these people's information. You know, you at our store, when you walk in for Kasi Lashes, we enter you into our system. You get your first and last name. We get your phone number and we usually get your email if you allow us to have it. And we don't send a lot of emails out, but we do like to keep in touch with our customers at least three times a year to let them know about, you know, what we're doing or anything new. Like when we started microblading back years ago, we let all of our clients know that we were now doing microblading because we were just doing lashes before and brows and brow tints. But we upgrade and we add it. Every time we add a new service, we let our customers know, hey, we now do this. And because we have all of their contact information, we're able just to send it out a lot easier and they're able to receive it. And they, we made so much money off of just one email blast. And you can do the same too by just simply keeping everyone's contact. I also own a hair salon that's totally separate from Fricasi Lashes Chain. I always tell uh, anyone that works in the blow dry lounge that works with us, I say, can you please get their first last name and information because sometimes we'll get something new in or we have some independent renters that they don't follow up with the clients. And what ends up happening is that the client just is that a one time hit or miss. They don't feel that connection with you and you don't reach out to them and they don't feel like you value them or they're just like, okay, that was just a a human and I'm moving on or I've just had that one experience with them and I'm moving on. But it's important that you follow up with your client around that two week mark if you're in the beauty business or even if it's if it's been more than a month, you know they need to see you again. So you should be following up with them, checking on them, and really just building that relationship. One thing I do, I really care about people. I really do naturally. So I find myself following up with people, especially in the early days. I used to always follow up. I'm a little bit busy now, so it's more automated now. But I used to always call my customers and check on them and see if there was anything that they needed, anything that I could fix, or you know if they needed something. And they really appreciated that. And some people will get personal with you. Um, They will end up texting you, especially if you're a smaller business in the beginning. Sometimes you make friends out of this. I don't let too many people get my friends because you should separate the two. But some sometimes it's cool and some people are just real friendly. You feel the vibe and you know it's right and they become your friends and you just follow up with them in a text and you don't want to leave them hanging. I have a person that I know that is very close to me that they um, are struggling in this area of their business where they don't like to respond to text messages. And the reason why I want to mention this in this podcast is that it's very important that you build a relationship with your client because they're not just coming to you for you. They're coming to you because there's something that you carry that they like. You're pouring into them and they're pouring into you. Following up with that person means so much to people. Checking on them means so much. I'm not saying you have to check on them every every day or every three months. I'm just saying it's good to every now and then, hey, I just want to see how you're doing. Let me know if you need anything. It's a level of respect and it also shows that you value their business. Uh, In the very beginning, I had notes I wrote on clients and what they liked and, you know, their kids. I I just remembered, I just have a good memory too. And I remember and I would say, hey, how's how's your your husband doing? Or how's your kid and your, your, how's a new baby doing? Things like that. Another thing that we did during the pandemic to just stay innovative is that we switched our whole entire business model. And it's important to know that in the times that we live in now, things are a little bit different now. And what I mean by that is what worked in 2019 and 2018, it may not work in 2021. And that's okay. But you have to think creative ways around it. And one thing that we did is we knew that we people did not want to be touched throughout the whole pandemic. So we changed um, our, our model a little bit. We had 
a lash line that we had. It was called MagnaLash.com. It's a magnetic lash line that during the pandemic, it skyrocketed through the roof. And I was, as soon as I got the shipment in, it was sold out because people still wanted to look beautiful during the pandemic. They didn't know when it was going to end. We couldn't do anyone's eyelashes because the governor in New York, Cuomo, would not allow us to touch anyone. Out of all respect, there were so many deaths in New York in the hospitals that we were like, we don't even want to touch anybody because we didn't know what this, we, it was an unknown virus. We didn't know a lot about the virus. All we knew was that people were dying in, in large amounts, of, and but we still needed to survive throughout it all. So we really pushed our magnetic lash line, which ended up booming so fast that I had to reorder and reorder and reorder. And even now another shipment is coming over and uh, I'll get into that on another podcast, how I handle that business that's new uh, that came up through the pandemic. It was already there, but it became more popular because everyone just wanted the lashes, but they didn't want anyone to touch them. So the magnetic lash line really skyrocketed and took off and did really well. It blew my accountant's mind. My Everyone was saying, how are you making all this money throughout the pandemic still? And I showed them the numbers and they're like, wow, you are so impressive. But it took for me to really promote and really just another thing too, please promote your business as much as you can. You should be the biggest promoter for your business. And what I mean by that is every time you go somewhere, even if you go to a restaurant, leave your business card and tip. The waitresses always love me because I always leave my business card and a tip. And if they don't need your service, there's someone else that may need your service that they may say, oh yeah, I have a business card. Or they remember you, especially if you're nice, they'll remember that. And my brother actually was the first person that actually advertised for me when I first started. He's 10 years older than me. He's my oldest brother. I love him to death. And he said, Felicia, I'll help you advertise. I said, I don't have any money to advertise. He said, look, I'll go just get me some flyers and papers. I'll pass them on the cars when the clubs let out. I will put them on every single car. So he would go up and put them on every single car window, windshield, and just let everybody know there was a new place in town that did lashes. And people would come in my store with that flyer three days later, two days later. Hey, I get this flyer was on my, my car door. Can you please do my lashes? And I was so humbled to know that that man, my brother, was effective on foot and marketed my business so well that it made money from the clients coming in. And I, it was the point where I ended up paying him because he was so good at um, just marketing for me and helping me out. And I ended up blessing him years later with a vehicle. I bought him his, uh, a car actually, because I was so grateful because he didn't judge me or say, oh, you don't got any money for me. He said, you know what? You're my sister. I love you. Let me help you out. So we're going to talk about that next, how to get family or friends to help out in the beginning, especially if you don't have a lot of money. There's some creative things that you can do. I've got a lot of good ideas on how you can Help them out while they help you out and everyone can win and be on board. Thanks so much for listening to the Beauty Boss Millionaire with Felicia Fricasi. That's it for today. Tune in tomorrow for the Beauty Boss Millionaire podcast. And don't forget to follow the Beauty Boss Millionaire, Felicia Fricasi, on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Beauty Boss Millionaire.